Hi, my name is Madeline Brent and I'm a PhD student at the University of California, Berkeley. I wrote my PhD dissertation on a subject called tropical geometry. Tropical geometry is a relatively new area of math that gives a connection between algebraic geometry and combinatorics. Algebraic geometry is the study of shapes that come from polynomial equations. So we're using algebra to study shapes. Combinatorics is the study of discrete objects and counting those objects. I like tropical geometry a lot. The reasons that I like it are, well, first of all, I just find it fun to think about. The second reason is that it's computational. You can use your computer a lot of times to help you in solving math problems. And I think that that's really cool. It's a visual subject, so I like to draw a lot and I can draw pictures of what tropical shapes look like and it can help me get an idea of how to solve a problem. And the last reason is that it can be used to solve really hard problems. Tropical geometry gives a really strong connection to algebraic geometry, which is a classical subject, and there's a lot of difficult open problems in that area that we can use tropical geometry to solve. The subject of algebra studies polynomial equations. If you don't know what a polynomial is, um, we'll get to that later. And geometry is the study of shapes. What algebraic geometry does is it studies shapes that are made by polynomial equations. Um, what do I mean by that? So let's take an example. If we have a polynomial, which is f of xy is equal to y minus x plus one. So that's a function that takes input two variables. So whenever you give it a number x and a number y, it outputs y minus x plus one. How do we make a shape out of this polynomial? So let's look at all of the points such that f of x, y is equal to zero. This happens whenever zero is equal to y minus x plus one. And if we just rearrange the equation, we can see that this is y is equal to x minus one, which is just a line. What line is that? If we look at the point when x is equal to zero, then we get that y is equal to minus one. If we plug in x is equal to one, then we get the output y is equal to zero. So we also have the point one comma zero on that line. So in total, we get this line. So this is just an example of how you can take a function and from it get a shape. Okay, so that's a little bit about classical algebraic geometry, but what are we doing in tropical geometry? So we're going to study shapes that are defined over a different algebra. What the heck do I mean by that? In regular algebra, you have the operations of addition and multiplication. And in tropical geometry, we're going to look at the min plus algebra, which has two new operations. So we're going to take the real numbers and um, give them a new version of addition and a new version of multiplication. Tropical addition is just taking the minimum of two numbers. So a tropical plus b is just equal to the minimum of a and b. So as an example, if we take one tropical plus three, we get as an output one. And then for multiplication, so our tropical multiplication is going to be old addition. So if we have a tropical times b, that's going to be a plus b. So as an example, if I take one tropical times three, then I get four. So this is the new algebra that we're going to use for tropical geometry. In algebraic geometry, we took a polynomial and made from it an algebraic shape. And in tropical geometry, we're going to take a tropical polynomial and make a tropical shape. So we really need to understand what a polynomial is in order to do this. A polynomial is any function that's written using additions and multiplications. So for example, we can take f of x, y is equal to x squared plus y squared. Now we're going to translate that definition to the min plus world. A tropical polynomial is a function that's written down using tropical addition and tropical multiplication. So for example, we might have x tropical times x tropical plus y tropical times y. This is equal to the minimum of x plus x and y plus y, or in short, this is the minimum of 2x comma 2y. So now we're going to be dealing with tropical polynomials, and I'm going to tell you how to make 
a shape out of a tropical polynomial. So if we have a tropical polynomial f of x, y, it can make a shape. And the points in the shape are the points where the minimum is achieved twice. So what do I mean by that? Let's do an example. For example, if my polynomial is f of x, y is equal to x tropical plus y tropical plus 1, we can rewrite this as the minimum of x, y, and 1. That minimum has three terms inside of it, x, y, and 1. For some special inputs of x and y, we're going to find that that minimum is achieved by more than one of the terms at once. So for example, if x is equal to y and both are less than or equal to 1, so if we put in, for example, 0, 0, the minimum would be between 0, 0, and 1, so 0 is attained twice, that's going to be a point in our tropical shape. Those collection of points, x is equal to y, and x and y are both less than or equal to 1, gives us a ray in the minus 1, minus 1 direction. And that ray starts from the point 1, 1. Then another possibility is that x is equal to 1, and y is greater than or equal to 1. And this gives us the green ray of points emanating upwards from the point 1, 1. The last thing that can happen is that y is equal to 1 and x is greater than or equal to 1. And this gives us the pink ray emanating from the point 1, 1, just going outwards to the right. And this thing is called a tropical shape. Here are some more examples of tropical shapes, just so you can get an idea of what they look like. Now, let's observe a few things about the tropical shapes. Um, first of all, they all kind of have this funny look about them where they're kind of balanced, like three people are having a game of tug of war at every vertex. The second thing that we see is um, many parallel lines emanating in different directions. And one of the most important features that I wanna also highlight is that they have flat sides. So in tropical shapes, you never see anything curvy like you would with algebraic shapes. So you might be wondering, why do we do this? It turns out that starting from an algebraic shape, you can actually make a tropical shape. In this process, you actually preserve some meaningful information about the algebraic shape. But on the other hand, tropical shapes have flat sides and finitely many pieces, which makes them simpler to study in many cases especially if what you want to know about your algebraic shape is some finite piece of information, often that is easier to detect from the tropical shape than it is from the algebraic shape. And this ends up being a really powerful tool. So sometimes we can even use tropical shapes to solve problems about algebraic ones. So I hope that you learned a little bit about tropical geometry. I think it's a really neat and fun subject. And thanks for watching.